Hello, I'm Arvon Jones. Yes, I admit it. It takes a big man to admit that. This is Vidorama, where we remember the VHS releases of the past in graphic detail. Today's video is a little different in the fact that the painting has been finished. Here it is. It's a tribute to Red Lips, which was released in 1995. Now, I painted this back in my old studio back in June of last year. But if you'd like to see how I painted it, stick around. Just setting up my paint for the project. The colours used were Mars Black, Titanium White and Brilliant Red. Before this stage, several sketches were prepared to establish likeness and tone. And then once I was happy with that, I created a main image, which was then photocopied onto thin card. Thin card takes the paint better than paper. I use acrylic paint and I also use a marker pen for finer detail. As ever, I add the background paint layer with my finger. Okay, Red Lips. The movie stars Michelle Bauer and Getty Chasen, and it concerns Caroline, who is down on her luck and needs to make some money. She agrees to participate in an experimental drug trial, but things go awry when she develops a slight side effect, the need to feed on human blood. As the killing starts, she meets Lisa, who was played by Bauer, and they fall in love. Or to quote the VHS ad, Getty Chasen is a sweet young girl who just happens to be a vampire. She doesn't want to kill people, she just needs their blood to stay alive. She especially doesn't want to kill her lover Lisa, played by Michelle Bauer. Lots of blood and lots of nudity make this a winner. The movie was written and directed by writer-director Donald Farmer, a former writer for Fangoria magazine. He was responsible for such movies as Cannibal Hookers, Demon Queen, Vampire Cop and Savage Vengeance, and the more recent Shark Exorcist, Cannibal Cop and Hooker with a Hacksaw. He was once called the Exploitation Cheapy Meister by Joe Bob Briggs, who described him as the one-man film industry of Tennessee. Um, having masked off the top half of the painting, I add water to the paint, thinning it uh, just enough so that it can be drawn up by a pipette. Now with the pipette, I squirt the paint at the top and let the paint run down the card. More paint is added as I go to increase the flow. Regular viewers will have seen me use this process on my incredible Melting Man painting. I also use the pipette to draw up any air bubbles on the paint. But uh, to go back to the movie, Red Lips follows in the cinematic tradition of the lesbian vampire movie, uh, following on in the footsteps of such movies as The Vampire Lovers and Lust for a Vampire. Farmer believed that the timing was perfect for just such a movie, as Hollywood had a newly revived interest in vampire movies at this point, since the profitable releases of Bram Stoker's Dracula and Interview with a Vampire. Perhaps not as glossy as those movies, Red Lips is shot on video and as a result the grainy quality lends to the way the story is presented. A good point was raised by Alan Silver in his book The Vampire Film from Nosferatu to True Blood. Uh, Red Lips uses mostly non-professional actors giving the film an unfinished and improvised feel of a documentary. One of the professional actors was Scream Queen Michelle Bauer, former Penthouse magazine Pet of the Month, and she appeared in X-rated movies before being hired by Fred Olin Ray in her first B-movie, The Tomb, which was released in 1986. And she went on to appear in numerous others after that, uh, Terror Night, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, Demon Warp, Sorority Babes in the Slime bowl Orama, to name just a few, and quickly became one of the most prominent B-movie Scream Queens of the 80s, along with Brink Stevens and Linnea Quigley. Having finished working on Assault of the Party Nerds, she left acting thing for a brief time, thankfully returning for Evil Tunes in 1992, and Fred Olin Ray and Jim Wanowski's Dinosaur Island in 1994. She would then appear in Vampire Vixens from Venus, Attack of the 60-Foot Centerfold, and Bikini Driving. The year this movie was released, she seemed somewhat disillusioned by the Scream Queen scene, and she announced her retirement at the 1995 Chiller Theatre Convention, but thankfully, she carried on. Uh, other titles to check out, Tomb of the Werewolf 2004, Ginger Dead Man 2 The Passion of the Crust in 2008, and she also featured in a 2011 documentary, Screaming in High Heels, The Rise and Fall of the Scream Queen Era. But as far as Red Lips, Bauer already knew Farmer. Uh, she had appeared on his 1992 documentary, Invasion of the Screen Queens, and Farmer was responsible for casting her in Rick Martin's Demented in 1994. In an article about Red Lips that featured in issue 7 of Screen Queens Illustrated, Farmer praised her professionalism. They would work again on Blood and Honour in 1997. However, that movie would not be released until 2000. Have a heart. Click subscribe. My own personal connection with this movie is down to this lady. 
going off topic slightly, having long retained this interest in monsters and horror movies, I had developed a particular fascination with vampire movies during the early 1990s, and a friend of mine who would visit conventions over in the States brought back a signed photograph of a vampire for me. This one. I had no information regarding who she was or what the photo was for. Despite that, it hung on my wall for 23 years. Then in 2013, I posted the photo on my Facebook and asked friends if they could identify her. And sure enough, I had a name, Getty Chasen. I then discovered that the photo that I had was one of a series of shots taken to promote this very movie at the 1995 Chilla convention. It seemed that Miss Chasen had been in attendance at the event, meeting fans and signing photos and videos. Now curious to know more about her, I turned to IMDB, but all it could tell me was that she was born on January 19th, 1970, and that she was from Erie, Pennsylvania, and that the Scottish band Sawyer had named a song after her in 1994. And that was it. Never want to give up, I ended up compiling a bio of her and her work, and you can read it in full on the Idle Features site. Link in the description. But she was once part of a two-woman hyperactive performance art group called Sister Nagster that specialised in acts involving nudity and sexuality. She was once arrested by the Nashville police after an outdoor performance violated a Tennessee ordinance on public nudity. Having had what she called a very, very small nude scene in an independent art film called Tut Small Ballad, she starred in her first movie, Hugh Gallagher's Gorotica, released in 1993, in which she played Carrie, a necrophiliac that steals corpses from graveyards for her own means. Her second role would come from comic book artist John Michael McCarthy, who had been co-producer of Gorotica, intending to cast her in a movie adaptation of his Cadaver comic. He instead cast her as Candy in Damselvis, Daughter of Helvis, which was released in 1994. It was during this year that she had co-starred in a Nashville stage production of the B-movie inspired play Women Behind Bars, and played the sole female role in the Pennsylvania run of Vampire Lesbians of Sodom, when she started working with Donald Farmer, who she had known since 1992. In fact, it was Farmer who had recommended her for Garotica. The first movie they worked on was Vicious Kiss, released in 1995, a drama about a man stalked and pursued by an emotionally unstable widow. Then they worked on Red Lips, and according to the article in Scream Queens magazine, filming started in Nashville in April of 1994 at Lucy's Records an alternative music store or nightclub. Several scenes were filmed there, including a live performance by the band Ancient Chinese Secret. Shooting ran late and apparently the stage was dangerously slippery due to the copious amounts of stage blood that had been spilled. Friends' apartments were also used as sets, as was the Best Western Hotel that they happened to be staying at for the Chilla convention, before moving on to Manhattan to film Michelle Bauer's scenes. Crew members stood in as extras on location shoots, which apparently were treated to many startled reactions from New Yorkers who had no idea a movie was being made. In the same article, Farmer praised Chasen's portrayal of Caroline, adding that she could be a bit overzealous in her vampire mode. She would bite through the foam latex neck pieces as planned, would also tear prosthetics, gnaw on blood bladders beneath them, but eventually on the actor underneath the latex. She once managed to snap off a dental acrylic fang on fellow actor Danny Fendley's neck but commended the energy she brought to the set, and apparently she went above and beyond the call of duty and did wonders for the spirits of the crew. The year Red Lips was released was also the year she appeared in Raoul Verhill's independent short film, Horror Girl, before working with Farmer one more time, appearing in Demolition Highway in 1996. Her last film would be with John Michael McCarthy again, only this time she was made up as an old woman for Sore Losers in 1997. Now having removed the painting from my easel, I lay old sheets of wallpaper and a cutout of the original sketch to protect the painting. Having added so much detail at this point, just drenching it in red paint was not an option. And then using the pipette, I drop water down blobs of red paint before flicking what's left over in the tub. But yeah, The Sore Losers was Getty Chasen's last movie. She stopped making movies, opting to work behind the scenes instead. Having achieved an MFA in cinematography from the American Film Institute in Los Angeles, along with a BA in film and video from Columbia College in Chicago, she became a freelance director of photography, shooting independent narrative film shorts. Their gain was horror's loss. Only a few movies, but she left a legacy of low-budget indie movies for us to seek out and enjoy. Speaking of which, Horror Girl was recently released on DVD by SOV Horror. I will leave a link to their site in the description, and if you check out my friend Jonathan Knight's B-Movie Madness channel, he recently reviewed it. 
Uh, you can find out more about the movie there. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that was of interest. I hope I didn't waffle on too much and that you like the painting. If so, please give the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, don't forget to click that all important subscribe button. There are many more Vidorama tribute paintings available for you to watch with many more on the way. A big thank you to Donald Farmer for all his help and Getty Chasen for being there all these years. And of course, my Patreon supporters for their support. So until next time, good night out there, whatever you are.